Welcome to episode 68 of the Serious About Security podcast for December 19th, 2013, brought to you by the Center for Education and Research and Information Assurance and Security, or Serious, at Purdue University. I'm Preston Wiley, and I'm joined again by Keith Watson and Mike Hill. And uh, I'll start this uh, week, I guess, with uh, an article. Um, And the article that I chose was uh, that researchers have uh, posted a a paper on uh, using uh, uh, like a firmware update to basically your camera software on a MacBook, a 2008 MacBook, um, to allow them to spy on users without uh, warning them by using the light. Because typically, when your when your camera on your MacBook is on, there's a light that lights up that says we're recording it. That's generally the case on uh, on most laptops. Um, that there's a light. I guess I don't have a light on my uh, on my tablet. And no. I don't. I don't know. I, you, I haven't found a tablet with a light on its so. camera or phone I for think, that matter. I think mine has a light on it. No, I have to check. <laughs> So I don't think would know that by now. So I guess I guess I in that case it's pretty wrong. pretty simple. But on on laptops they almost all have lights, and and the, the I think the traditional uh, uh, thought is that that light is is or what I've heard is it's hard basically hardwired, so that if the camera is on the light is on, and there's no way to bypass that. Um, that was generally what we were told yes in the past and that seems especially with macbooks uh 2008 macbooks and it seems to me the researchers have said they're going to attempt to update this for newer versions of the macbook that it's not necessarily true that essentially there's fir- that there's a board and it has s- its own software on it that uh, controls the camera and that v- via a a firmware update they can actually change the ability of that board to not turn the light on when the camera is on. Well, what was really cool that they demonstrated was they can do it within the app they wrote. So they can reprogram the firmware so that that light doesn't come on and they can capture that video. And then when they're done, when the app is closed, they reprogram the firmware back to its default state. So if a user then opens an app, you know, Skypes and expects that light to come on, it still will. So there's no residue that you know, there was something that had run uh, previously, so it was pretty clever how they demonstrated it. And they also uh, talk about a kernel extension, Eyesight Defender, to defend against these attacks too, which is well, interesting. Well, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not, I'm not an electrician or an electrical engineer or anything like that. But how hard would it be to put a a light in the circuit with the camera so they both had to work in tandem with each other. Why would you allow a software update to modify that behavior if that's the behavior you always well, want to, to incorporate, unless you wanted to allow for spot well, on users? Well, I think their, the original uh, security design basically said the CPU should not be able to disable the light, which means anybody running software on the main operating system should not be able to disable the light. However, uh, as hardware vendors are often want to do, they make firmware available to fix bugs and right. correct issues. And this is just one of the firmware flashable things that you can apply an update to. In fact, I've seen, I believe I've seen iSight camera firmware updates a long time ago. I haven't seen it lately. But that's just one of them. I mean, you can flash the firmware on your disk. Right. You can flash the firmware on your trackpad, probably. I mean, they, all these things have the ability to be flashed. Well, it makes sense that you would allow firmware updates to your camera in case there was a problem with focusing or sure. or whatever. But it seems to me like if if you are absolutely certain you want that light to always come on with the camera, you could yeah design you with could design hardware something. design. Yes. You can make it so that camera will never turn on. Unless that light goes on. Yeah, yeah, I would think you could do that. But they chose to do that also apparently in software so that it can be changed. Yep. Yeah, and in this case it was. <laughs> yes, and right. And previously the FBI has also said that they have used malware on computers in order to use cameras to watch people. Um, 
and probably not just on 2008 MacBooks. Probably not. So apparently this is being done uh, more by the FBI as well. Well, I do think it's interesting um, that they, I mean, I, I really think they did a really nice job with this research, and I would encourage people to, to read the report because it's, it's very well done. Um, and as Keith mentioned, they, not, you know, they, they contacted Apple about this, uh, you know, and disclosed what they had written that would take advantage of this. And they also developed the EyeSight Defender, uh, which appears to be what it adds is it needs the ability to have root access in order to change that behavior. Um, but what was interesting, they noted this, that, you know, a lot of times malware, you know, like a root kit, will have root privileges. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a step in the right direction, but it may not be the, the full solution. So I, I guess we're back to t putting tape up over our cameras. Is that, is that the way to go? Uh, probably a physical <laughs> method to do that is probably the right way. But then, you know, if you're going to worry about your camera, are you also going to worry about your microphone? Too. Well, why are we not doing shutters? We were talking about solutions. Why, why aren't cameras yeah. with shutters? I mean, seriously. Well, it's more likely to fail because it's a mechanical <laughs> piece. Put a mechanical it's, shutter. Well, <laughs> then that breaks the whole design of, of the <laughs> sleek Apple product. I mean, yeah, but think about it. Come on. Well, I'm still, yeah, I still know quite a few people that have <laughs> tape over their cameras, and I thought that was silly because I always thought you couldn't turn the camera on without the light coming on, too. It turns out I was wrong. So. Well, well, I will admit, <laughs> so. I will admit, my daughter has a school issued computer, and one of the first things I did, it's a Windows machine, and I was a little smug. I was like, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on this because it's Windows and I don't trust it. And it turns out the report comes out and it's the it's, it's the, the Mac. Max. So, <laughs> so it's like well, I guess we should all have have tape on our on our on our cameras. We may have to go that route, sadly. Um, and and I, I will admit, I did not read this report fully, but do you know if any similar things are being done with, we mentioned earlier, tablets? Uh, because typically, and I just verified with my iPad, you're right, a light doesn't come on. So there's no behavior like that. So do we know if there's any vulnerabilities with within tablets? I'm sure there probably are. It seems like there could be. Well, tablets are a little bit, the architecture, I mean, the, the right. OS is a little more did. closed. I mean... Not always. I mean, you you can you can give on your MacBook you can give a you can give an application root access to do anything oh, sure. you want on your device on your iPad or your Android tablet you can't do that. There's certain OS level functions that are just not available at well, all to true, to applications but, unless you root it. Yes, but also there to take advantage of of malware taking advantage of the camera, it has to have higher privilege to do that. And it may have to exploit a vulnerability to get that. There's right. no reason it couldn't exploit a similar vulnerability in any mobile device to do that as well. Right. Right. Well, I mean, the, 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 the I guess the question is, is this really a, a vulnerability? I mean, is, is, this, is, this is, it, a, is this a fixable problem? If, if, I think if, like you said, the hardware was designed and maybe a physical shutter or design. <laughs> Perhaps that might be a solution. I don't know that that would be an acceptable solution by customers. Right. So I, I, I'm not sure if this is actually a, you know, if you have a 2008 MacBook, I think you're stuck with this problem. Well, I think if you have any MacBook, you're right. potentially yes. stuck with this problem. You, I think if you have any computer, I'm yes. sure, I'm so, sure I, have a, I, have a, I have a Windows computer like we're recording this on a Windows computer, and uh, maybe that would have the same problem. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if they use... Uh, a lot of those camera vendors are yeah. shoving a lot of the same cameras in, into well, tons of different it, Windows it, devices, And to too. take a d slightly different approach, the less technical approach, which we've talked about tape and stuff, um, with my MacBook, you know, it's only open when I'm using it. I shut the lid, you know, and I just do that because... In my case, I don't want like a cat jumping up on it or something. Well, you're probably, you know? so not, just, you're probably not undressing in front of your computer. No, I'm not. No, um, you know, it's in Keep a separate your computers room. Computers out of your bedroom. You know, so I mean, how concerned should we really be? You know, it's more of if you got your MacBook or your or your iMac, you know, set up in your bedroom facing your bed, you know, you might want to think about maybe putting a piece of tape over it or something. Um, but you know, if you're using it in an office setting. You know, it's like, 
You probably still don't want those images, but are they really getting anything that interesting? Well, you know? could be. Could be. I wouldn't say yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what people right. want to see. Well, especially if they were able to also <clears throat> access the microphone. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, that <clears throat> just like the, the other article um, talking about the FBI's use of malware to try to find somebody. I mean, that could be one way. But it could also be the criminal element trying to find you as well. Or, or to uh, case your house because they use the camera to see what you have in your house and What's see whether your stuff's worth stealing. Who knows? So Apple, as usual, has been quiet on this issue. <laughs> and I doubt no we'll, we'll hear anything. But I would imagine um, if there were something significantly different in the modern design, that they'd probably be making a statement to say, well, we, we recognize this was an issue in older models, but we don't anticipate this being an issue in newer models. And, uh, and, and not to criticize the researchers, I think this is a, a great paper, and I think they did a great job with it, but I'm always, and I know it's sometimes, sometimes it just takes time to release these papers, but to me, I always, I kind of look at how I work at things, and I'd want it to work on the most modern thing I could, and if I couldn't get to work with that, I'd go back a previous version. If I couldn't get to work on that one, I'd go back a previous version. You know, think about Windows, you know, I can't get this to run in 7, I can't get it to run in Vista, but I can get it to run in XP. <laughs> so I can say, well, a lot of people still use XP, and this is a vulnerability, and this makes noise, but, you know, if it doesn't run on the most modern one, and I just wonder if you know, uh, if there's some of that in this case, I'm, I'm glad they said they want to do, continue to do research, and I hope they will. Um, but, but I wonder, you know, how many people are still using 2008 and previous MacBooks and iMacs? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, but it, yeah, some, some good research out of this. Uh, very well written paper and uh, very interesting implications if nothing is done to take a look at the issue. Yeah, like I said, very, very well done. And it, it's nice that they disclose, disclose it to Apple, but they also provided the exploit. So, I mean, that's, I mean, Apple should at least give them, you know, some recognition and say thank you for, for working that's on That's not how they do that. Yeah, but we, yeah, I won't go down that road. They don't do that. All right, well, we'll move on to the next, uh, the next article on that. Is All right, so, so the next thing of discussion would be um, the President's Review Group on Intelligence and Communications Technologies. And this was a group formed after some disclosures about the NSA and its uh, recent, uh, not recent, but recent disclosures about a, um, things it's doing in terms of capturing data on U.S. citizens, looking at metadata from telephone calls and spying on foreign leaders, those sorts of things. And the president basically picked a, a commission or a panel, actually, of people to go and provide recommendations. Uh, there's some question as to whether he was ever going to listen to what the panel had to say, but you know, for publicity reasons and politics, he went and formed this panel. <clears throat> and this was back in August 2000, or I'm sorry, August 27, 2013. Uh, the memo was written. Basically, the mental members of the panel include Richard Clark, who is a former uh, counterterrorism with the previous uh, several presidents, uh, Bush, Clinton, and uh, Bush Sr., I believe. And then um, three other members who I'm not familiar with, and, and, and then Peter Swire, who... The only reason I know of Peter Swire is because he married uh, Annie Anton, who was a visiting professor at Purdue a couple years ago. So that's really, I don't know him, but I just know his name and his relationship with Annie. So anyways, uh, review group here looked at uh, what was going on, talked a little bit about history and how the legal framework formed after September 11th and some of its aftermath, and then some of the reform um, that was recommended based on U.S. citizens and then reforms based on non-U.S. citizens. And basically they provided 46 recommendations. And we're not going to go through all of those, but basically uh, the, pan the document's fairly long at 300 pages. 
And there are a variety of recommendations here, some of which start with changes to the law to talk about uh, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court and what it should be doing in terms of gathering information and recommending that the government uh, use uh, something more like a subpoena, uh, which is tightly focused on what they're looking at, the scope and breadth of what they're looking at as well, and instead of this broad approach to just suck up all the data and we'll figure out what to do with it later. Um, there's lots of other recommendations here as well. Um, there's um, a recommendation to change the, the board of privacy. I'm trying to find the name of that. There's currently a board out there um, related to some of the collection on privacy of the information, and basically they're suggesting uh, reforming that with a new mandate and a new mission to go after uh, privacy a little more clearly. Um, anyways, there's a lot of recommendations here. It's a very long report, but there were a, a couple uh, articles and papers talking about it as well. And then the other thing I'll mention is um, the EFF, which made a statement after this report came out and basically said, hey, this is a good start, but it doesn't go far enough. And that's typically what we'd expect to hear from the EFF. Yeah. Well, uh, others, have called it, that others have called it surprisingly aggressive, and I don't necessarily think that's because they think it's aggressive enough. I think it's because they were expecting just kind of... Watered down yeah, sort of very watered down, yeah. like, uh, you're doing most things okay, but you need to change these few things and you know, sure. all that. They, that's kind of more what they were expecting, and, right. they, and they got a lot more than, than what... Well, they're recommendations at this point as well, so... <coughs> yes, they're, absolutely. These are, all these are non-binding. They're right. simply recommendations, and, and Obama has already ignored one of them. Yeah, so. probably will ignore all four. Yes. Or I'm, there'll be a few... I'm, gu I'm, guessing, I'm guessing there's a lot of them that are you, you would never notice if he implemented or not. That's true. And, and, and this is just a report that he can point to to say, hey, look, we got this report. We got this report and we're, we're making changes. Yeah. I can tell you what, because that's all. And I've read it. And I've read it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got I think. Report well, I got through, it. I got the report I, page I mean, 10. I'm open to many board. of the ideas. And then, you know, some some other news is going to come up and, and it's all going to go away and it's right. going to be somewhat forgotten. So, well, so one one recommendation that, that, I, that I forgot to mention, which I thought was important, is that the recommendation of the person who runs the NSA. Um, currently is a military officer, a four-star general, Keith Alexander. And the recommendation of the report says, put a civilian in the role. So that was interesting. The other part is, uh, General Alexander is also in charge of the nation's cyber command, which is a joint forces uh, command on offensive um, cyber security, if you will. And so their recommendation is to split that and make sure two different people are in charge. So one would be military from the offensive side of it, and then the NSA role would be a civilian role. So that was another and interesting that's the one recommendation. that Obama has yeah. decided to ignore. So far. So, yes. Stand okay. behind his man. I, I think he pretty much stated that he uh, would not he would not be replacing them him with two people. Well, Yes, so. but yeah, as you know, in, in this, the, the heads of agencies tend to rotate right. every once in a while, so I wouldn't, wouldn't say that's the final word on it, but for now, yes. Yeah, it indicated, I think he, what he was rejecting <clears throat> was the idea of having separate leaders for both roles. Not that the leaders would ever change, but that they would be two separate leaders right. in those roles. But like you said, anything can change. Well, if you appoint a civilian, how's the civilian going to run the military side of it from the cyber command perspective? It's going to get increased responsibility. That's pretty cool. You should apply. I uh, know. Come on. <laughs> That'd be cool. So, you know, there's been a lot of this on the news, but it's been around the phone record. There's not been a lot of this. Not necessarily news. this, but but the the, the phone whole court saying yeah. I don't think that's constitutional, constitutional. That has been on the news, and that's yeah. something we haven't talked about specifically. So, do you think, based on that and these recommendations, that they're going to stop the way they're collecting that data no <laughs> yeah. I, I, why would i say that because the president <laughs> who's the commander-in-chief of the military and is also the executive 
in charge of the, of the DOD and the NSA has no incentive to change it. Well, He's a second term president. What incentive is there for him to change any practice on what they do, other than Congress coming in and mandating change through law? See, I, I, which he can over, he can ignore through veto. I kind well. of agree, but I think it'll, I think something will change, but it'll have the same effect. But instead of the data being collected the way it is now, it'll be collected slightly differently, and it'll say, well, there's this. Oversight. Well, there's always that. But there's this oversight; they have to get a court order, but on the back end, they've still got the pipeline, and they can oh, still yeah, do what still they were do doing. The but it'll have do. the illusion of having a change that was made, and That's now, now this is now this is being done differently, and the same vulnerabilities don't exist, or some kind of statement like that. So, well, <laughs> yes, there's there's that potential, but uh, I don't expect any change out of this unless there's continued pressure to do so. And it's got to come from Congress, and it's got to come from citizens, and, and this is not something they seem too concerned about right now. Well, he rejected one, so maybe the other 45 will get in for him. Well, that's awful optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever read the 9-11 report? No. I, I have read the 9-11 report. And how many of those recommendations ever got implemented? Very few. And that <laughs> seems like a little more significant historical event than this. Well, most of the, as I said, a lot of these recommendations are, at, we will never know if they're implemented because they're, they're done in the NSA. And Absolutely. Stuff we, it's all stuff top we, secret. It's all top secret. So even if they are implemented, we won't know it. Nope. So, yeah. which probably means they won't get implemented. I, I, I thought it was interesting also one of the things they focused on was saying that instead of the U.S. kind of uh, seeking out zero days and creating them so that they can use them to their advantage, they should be... Res, uh, responsibly disclosing those to the software company so they can be fixed. Wow, um, what a concept. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see that change happening, but I, I thought that, that was interesting either. that they they mentioned that uh, and said, you know, uh, they should not be in the business of working that way. <laughs> so, well, yeah, um, we've talked about that yeah. a long time ago, and, and you know... Well, well, I guess what that. I find interesting is, as far as I know, the U.S. government has never admitted to ever participating in those acts. <laughs> but yet one no, of the, you know. No, that was all leaks and <laughs> unofficial and crazy statements from DOD officials. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, the report's interesting. I mean, I have I have, didn't actually read the entire report. I read well, news articles. A lot of reading. Yeah. Lot of reading so yeah. I imagine it's interesting if you can get through the, uh, the, the, uh, political speak or whatever that is inherent in pretty much all government reports. Um, I imagine. Are, have you read the report, Keeney? I've, or I've, I've read most of the report. I skipped the, the unimportant stuff. Is it organized in a, in a, in a manner that makes it somewhat easy to well, read? Well, the, the, the recommendations are short, which kind of work uh, well, because if you look at the some of the list of recommendations and the high level... They're a paragraph long, a couple sentences. Okay, so they're actually they're actually divided by recommendation yeah. as well. Yeah, and if okay. you scroll down further into the report, you know, you get down to the the, the meat of it, if you will. Then there's a lot more explanation about okay. how, about uh, the, their reasoning behind it. Uh, so you can you can you can go into the report, and there's more or less a bullet point of all. The yeah, well, there's like I said, it's like a paragraph summary, and then if you go further down, like here's page eighty six, the start of the recommendation number one, same stuff repeated, and then there's a further uh, two pages on explanation and citations of other things. So, so from an executive level, there's the 46, which are all summarized, and then there's detail for the lawyers further on. Right. Okay. And there is an executive summary. Which oh, you yes. might find beneficial. Yeah, <laughs> it's only a couple pages long. That's that's for that's for uh, Obama to read, right? <laughs> yes, well, he's, yes. He's, yeah. his advisor is <laughs> three hundred eight pages, <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Actually, for a PDF, it does have a lot of blank pages at the end. <laughs> Way to go, guys! That's government for you. Yeah, that's well, there was, that was stuff you know. Just this page is intentionally redacted. Redacted. left blank. Yeah. Yeah. This is a couple of those. Anyway, yeah. that's. That's what the software right. changes it to. Remove that. This page intentionally left blank. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so citizens, we 
things will be status quo essentially. Probably. So Probably. if you're concerned about this. privacy and you're interested in privacy tools and you want to use those, go ahead and look into that and start using them because nothing's changing right now. And that's just, you know, we're concerned right now with the NSA. What about all the foreign governments also spying on us? So, hey, that's it's true. a good time to worry about privacy all around. And we so have past good. episodes on privacy tools. So. And more to come. And more to come. Yep. And this will probably be our last podcast of the year. I don't imagine we're going to probably be not. doing stuff over the Christmas holiday and, and things like that. Nope, I think this will be the last one. So, so. happy holidays to everyone. Everyone that listens. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. And stay tuned. I think we're going to have a newer format in, in the new year. Yeah, I think uh, new, the new new the new year come will come with changes and uh, hopefully for the better. Yeah, we're going to try to get better. And, uh, we're, we're doing our homework. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So okay. I guess we're done with that. Thanks to Mike Hill and Keith Watson. I'm Preston Wiley. Have a happy holidays and uh, stay tuned.